Hi everybody, welcome to our 11.3 notes. In 11.3 we are solving quadratics equations again, uh, this time using the quadratic formula. So some of you guys may be familiar with the quadratic formula, but the first thing that we're going to do is figure out where does it come from and how do we get it. So we're going to derive the quadratic formula. So what I'm going to do to figure out what the quadratic formula is and actually get there uh, is I'm going to start out in standard form. So standard form is looks like this, where everything's on the same side and it equals zero. Okay, so I've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That's where I'm going to start out. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just like completing the square, if you had a coefficient by your x squared, you divide everything by that. So we're going to do that first. We're going to divide everything by a at the very beginning. So that's going to look like x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals 0 divided by a would be 0. The next thing, we kind of get it set up to complete the squared. Do you guys remember doing that? So we're going to keep the x squared and the b over a x over here, and we're going to have a little plus blank for our completing the square. And we'll subtract c over a. That would be our constant or just plain old number uh, to the other side. So we'll have equals negative c over a. All right, next up, completing the square. If you guys remember, completing the square is where you take that middle term. For us, that's b over a x. And remember, the x comes from the x squared. So we're just looking at b over a. We're going to take that middle term. We're going to divide it by 2. And then we're going to square it. Okay, so what that's going to look like for us is going to be half of that, so that would be b over 2a squared. Okay, and remember whatever you add to one side, you need to add to both sides. So if you want to go ahead and square that out, uh, that would be b squared over... 2 squared, which is 4, a squared, which is a squared. Okay. Next up, let's factor the left side. So if you guys remember the factoring, the square root of x squared would be x. We're going to have a plus because that was our middle sign. And the square root of b over 2a squared, now you see why it didn't actually square it on the left side, is b over 2a. and the whole thing is squared. Okay. And I'm trying to just do one thing at a time, so I'll deal with the right side in just a second. On the right side, we do need to find a, a least common denominator so that we can add our fractions together. So one denominator is a, the other denominator is 4a squared, so our LCD would be 4a squared. Okay. So to get to that LCD of 4a squared, I'll multiply the first fraction by 4a over 4a. So when I multiply by 4a in the numerator, I'll have negative 4ac. And when I multiply by 4a in the denominator, I'm going to have 4a squared like I want. Second fraction already has the right denominator, so it gets to stay as it is. So there's b squared over 4a squared. Uh, the left side is staying exactly like it was before. I haven't done anything to it right now. Okay. Then, now that we have the least common denominator on the right side, we can rewrite it as one fraction instead of two. Okay. So if I add those together, uh, you will have negative 4ac plus b squared, or if we want to rearrange it so it looks a little bit more like the formula, um, I'll put my b squared in front, okay? So that'd be b squared plus negative 4ac or minus 4ac all over the same denominator, which is 4a squared. And again, I haven't done anything to the left side, so it'll stay exactly like it was. Okay. All right, if you guys remember, at this point when we were completing the square, we had a perfect square over here. We're trying to get x by itself. So to undo the squaring, we would square root both sides. Okay? So if I take the square root of both sides, I'll have x 
plus b over 2a over here. And I'll have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay. Then we can simplify a little bit on the right side. The numerator, I can't do very much, okay? As much as you're going to say, ooh, does the square root and that b squared cancel? It doesn't because we still have subtraction in there. It's not the whole thing that's squared. It's just a little part of it, okay? So the numerator is going to stay exactly what it, like it was, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. The denominator, though, I can take the square root of 4a squared. The square root of 4 would be 2, and the square root of a squared would just be a. So it's all over 2a. I didn't do anything to the left side in this step, so it stays just like it was. Okay. Then the last thing, I'm trying to get x by itself. I'm trying to solve for x just like uh, a normal problem. This has a lot of letters in it this time. Uh, so to solve for x, I just need to get rid of this b over 2a. It's added, so the opposite of adding would be to subtract it. So if I subtract b over 2a from both sides, then I would have negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then I can rewrite it as one fraction if I'd like to. If you notice, they have the same denominator, which is great. So rewritten as one fraction, I would have x equals, I'm just going to put the negative on top so they have the same denominator. So I'll have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and this is all over 2a, which was the common denominator. And we're done! Okay, so that's where the, the uh, quadratic formula comes from. Um, and so the quadratic formula, basically, now that we've gotten there, you guys would love to use it, I'm sure, uh, looks like this. So to use the quadratic formula, it's got to be in standard form first. If you notice, that's where we started out up here with the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we've got to have it, have everything on one side equal to zero. Um, your a, b, and c are your coefficients. So a is the coefficient for x squared, b is the coefficient for x, and c is your constant, okay? And then it's always going to use this formula. So if you know this formula, you're going to be in great shape. So x equals, and there's even a little song if it helps you guys remember it, okay? So you can put it to tune if it helps. Uh, negative b, negative b, plus or minus the square root, plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, over 2a, over 2a. And that's your equation, and you can use it whenever you'd like to. Um, so you'll substitute first, and then it's a lot of simplifying after that. You guys ready to try some? Great. All right, so just reminding us what it is so that it's here on the page for us to follow. Our quadratic formula is x equals negative b, negative b, plus or minus the square root, plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac, over 2a, over 2a. All right, so let's try a few. In example one, first one I have is 4y squared minus 11y minus 3 equals 0. So this time, in case you're wondering, we're not solving for x, we're solving for y, but otherwise it's very similar. Uh, so for us, our a value is going to be 4, because that's the coefficient for y squared. Our b value is going to be negative 11, because that's the coefficient for our plain old y. And our c value will be negative 3, because that's the constant. Okay, so let's plug it in and see how it goes. So instead of x equals, I have a different variable, I have y, I'll have y equals. So I'm going to have the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 11 would be positive 11, plus or minus the square root. Then I'm going to have b squared, so I'm going to take negative 11 and square it. Remember, that's negative 11 times negative 11, which is positive 121. Minus 
and then I'm going to do 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 3. And this is all over 2a, so 2 times a, which is 2 times 4. Okay, let's keep going from there. Now it's all about simplifying. So I'm going to have 11 plus or minus the square root. Uh, so if you do uh, 4 times 4 times negative 3, uh, you're going to get negative 48. So then we're going to have 121 minus negative 48, which is the same as plus positive 48. And it's all over 2 times 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, let's keep going. So inside the square root, I can do 121 plus 48, which would be 169. So now I've got 11 plus or minus the square root of 169 all over 8. And I can actually take the square root of 169, so let's do it. The square root of 169 is 13. So now I've got 11 plus or minus 13 all over 8. So what you're doing uh, is we're actually going to get two nice pretty answers. What we're going to do for one answer is 11 plus 13 over 8. So 11 plus 13 would be 24 over 8, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. My other option is I would do 11 minus 13. So 11 minus 13 would be negative 2 over 8, and that simplifies to be negative 1 fourth. So I've got two nice pretty answers here. Um, I'm going to have y equals 8 thirds, or y equals negative 1 fourth. Okay? Let's try another one. In part b, I have 2x squared plus 19 equals 14x. One thing you'll notice is it's not in standard form yet, uh, but it's not difficult to get it there. So to get it into standard form, I'm going to subtract 14x from both sides. And then make sure that everything's in the correct order. So we do go in descending order. Uh, so the 2x squared is going to go first. My minus 14x is going to go next. And my plus 19 is going to go last equals 0. Okay. In this one, my a value would be 2. b is negative 14. c is 19. Okay. So... Using my quadratic formula, I'll have x equals the opposite of b. So the opposite of negative 14 would be positive 14, plus or minus the square root. Then I'll have b squared, so 14 squared is 196, minus 4ac, so that's 4, times a, which is 2, times c, which is 19. And this is all over 2a, so 2 times a, which is 2. And then it's just simplifying from here. So I'll have 14 plus or minus, and inside the square root, um, I can do 4 times 2 times 19. And if you do 196 minus all of that, you're going to get 44. And the, and the denominator, 2 times 2, is 4. Uh, with the square root of 44, you can simplify that a little bit. 44 would be 4 times 11, and 4 is 2 times 2, so we can take out a pair of 2s. So then we'll have 14 plus or minus 2 square root of 11 all over 4. And one thing you'll notice is we can actually simplify that further because 14, 2, and 4 are all divisible by 2. I know the 11 isn't. That's fine. Imagine it's like an x. If you had like 2x, you can still divide by 2 because it's 2 times the square root of 11. So to simplify this, I can divide by 2 and get 7 plus or minus the square root of 11 all over 2. And that's my final answer.